morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning to everybody. Good morning to you. There's pretty nice acoustics in this room and a little bit of an echo. So this morning I thought I'd show you another room. And this room has been fully sanitized and I'm here all by myself. So I'll take my mask off since there is an echo. Then I want you to be able to hear me a little better because we have to wear our masks when we come to church. It's not forever, it's just for now. But if you come to church and the sanctuary happens to be all filled up, what do we do? Where do we go? Well, let me show you. Up here, oh, there we go. Up here in our parish hall, we have it set up so there's extra seating so that we can all remain socially distant and still sit together as families, of course. Also, if you happen to be up here, you'll see that we have everything projected on our big screen and all the sound comes through too. Mm -hmm. So this way we can all still worship together. So how is that different? If you're just sitting at home watching the service on TV and then coming here and watching it on the projector? Well, one, you're not at home anymore. And two, you can still have communion with us. Because mm -hmm. Father Rick comes right up here during the service to give us communion. Isn't that wonderful? So we still get to have that special time. So last week, we talked about the Ten Commandments. Do you remember? Remember the first four? This one's backwards for you. But the first four tell us how to love God. And the last ones, the last six here, tell us how to love other people. So we know that Moses went up on the mountain. Should I show you instead of just tell you? I think so too. So let's see what's going on with our friends. Here we go. We gotta move the camera. There we go. And boom. There's all of our friends. We can move things too. Here's all our friends. Remember, they're going through the desert. Now, remember, our friends were down there. And Moses, see, here's our burning bush. Remember, that represented Yahweh, God. And here's Moses. I'm so glad you all came back to have fun with us today. Moses, you're supposed to be on the mountain. Okay, I'll be right there. So Moses is up on the mountain, learning what God wants him to instruct his people, getting the Ten Commandments, right? All those rules to live by. But the people are down here at the bottom of the mountain. Now, what's going on there? Moses. Yes? No, no, you're supposed to be up on the mountain. You were up on the mountain for a very, very long time. And the people down here were getting a little worried and restless. Even the sheep were thinking, this is pretty bad. <laughs> so, they became afraid. They were afraid that something awful had happened to Moses and that he wouldn't come back. And they, left, and they felt that they were left all alone. And they complained to Aaron. Here's Aaron. Hello. So they all lined up and they started telling Aaron that they were scared and afraid. We're scared. We're afraid. What if Moses never comes back? Oh no. Oh no. We don't know what happened to Moses, they said. The one who led us out of Egypt. So let us make a God to lead us from the desert now. Now the Hebrews lived thousands of years ago, and in those days, most people believed that there were lots of gods, not just one. The thing that made the Hebrews special was that they worshiped only one God, Yahweh. And it was Yahweh who freed them from slavery in Egypt and was leading them to the promised land. Yahweh was their God, and they were Yahweh's people. That was a covenant. And that big word covenant means promise. 
But the Hebrew people were scared. They're lost in this desert. Oh my, even the sheep were getting a little restless. <laughs> oh man. Now, that was the promise that God had offered them, and they had agreed to it. But now they felt unsure of everything because Moses was taking so long. God has a lot to say. Not my fault. I want to make sure I hear everything he says. That's right, Moses. So it might have taken a long time. So now the people are very restless. They're, they're getting scared, and, and they don't like to be scared. So Aaron, so they decided that they were going to build their own god, a new god to worship. Aaron must have been really scared of the people. So he told the people to go to all their tents, right? Go out to all your tents here and gather all the gold that you can. If they want to make a fake god, I will help them. He was probably scared that they might hurt him if he didn't, right? I know I would be. So he told them to give them all the gold. And he put the gold into a big pot over a fire. Over a fire? Oh boy. Do we have a fire here? Let's see. Maybe we can use these lights right here. A little bit of our tissue paper. Oh, there's the big fire. So all the people had to bring their gold to this fire. Oh boy. So here in the middle is the fire, okay? So he starts melting down all the gold in a big pot. Then he poured the melted gold onto a mold. So a mold is kind of like what shape you want it to be in. So here's the mold. It was a calf, a little calf. That's a baby cow in case you weren't sure. And it stood there. So then he took the, the the gold, and he placed it over this golden calf. There we go. And then he built an altar, which is kind of like a place to worship. And they put the golden calf on the altar. Uh-oh. After that, they shouted, here is our new God who will lead us out of the desert. Oh no. Tomorrow we'll have a festival to honor the new God. So the next day, the Hebrews threw a party like no one had ever seen before. We're talking about Cheyenne Frontier Days type of party. That's a pretty big party. There was probably lots of food and probably lots of music and dancing and celebrating. Woohoo! We're having a party. Party time. Party time. This is excellent. We're having a party. Woo! Meanwhile, Yahweh and Moses were still talking up here on Mount Sinai. There they are. They're talking. Uh-oh. Moses didn't know that the people at the bottom of Mount Sinai, at the bottom of the mountain, were throwing a big party and making a, a false god, an idol. Oh, no. But Yahweh sure knew what was going on. Our Lord knows everything. So how did the Lord felt when the people called the statue of the golden calf their God? I'm pretty sure he probably felt a little angry, don't you think? The Lord told Moses, you better get down there. Your people have already sinned and rejected me. Don't try to stop me. I'm angry with them, and I'm going to destroy them. Oh, no! But Moses begged the Lord to think about it some more. He reminded God of the promise made with Abraham and to the people to always be their God and give them the land of their own. So then the Lord decided not to destroy all the people. Lord, please don't destroy all the people. Remember, remember, we're your people. You promised to take care of us. Please don't destroy them. Okay. We did it! All right. 
heights. So the Lord told Moses to get back down that mountain. Moses went down the mountain to see how bad things were. The Lord had written the Ten Commandments on two big stones. And Moses carried those stones with him. It's a long trek down a mountain. What is going on down here? Oh my goodness! When Moses went down the mountain to see just how bad things were, he carried those two stone tablets with him. And he got to the bottom of the mountain. Moses couldn't believe his eyes. He saw the people of God praising and dancing around a silly gold statue shaped like a calf. They were acting silly. Moses became angry, and he threw down the stone tablets. <gasps> oh, no. And they smashed into a million pieces. Moses melted the golden calf down to the ground. Bye, golden calf. <laughs> so now he melted that golden calf down to the ground. Then he mixed it with water and made the people drink it up so that they would realize there was nothing special about that statue they were worshiping. It was a fake god. That's what we call an idol. So now with the golden calf gone, the people got back together again. We'll gather up all our little people here to listen to what Moses had to say. Listen up, folks. The people were punished for their sin, but God did give them another chance. After all, they were God's people, and even with all the mistakes they had made, God still loved them. Isn't that amazing? God loves us, even if we make mistakes. And oh my goodness, do we make mistakes, right? I know I make a lot of them, and I know I've made a lot of them, even when I was younger, like your, your age, probably. Just because we're adults doesn't mean that we stop making mistakes, because we do. But isn't it wonderful to know that we have a God that loves us, no matter what mistakes that we make? Mm -hmm. God doesn't want us to worship fake gods. He wants us to worship him, because he loves us. He loves us so much that he gave his son to us to help pay for our sins so that we can be with him. That's pretty amazing, right? So before we go this morning, let's say a quick little prayer. So to do that, we'll fold our hands. So this way we're not playing with our toys around us because that would be bad. <laughs> and we'll bow our heads and we'll close our eyes because this is our special time with God. And we can tell God anything. We can tell him about those bad things that we've done. And we know that he is a loving, forgiving father, just like he forgave the Hebrew people in the desert. He'll forgive us too. So let's say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that we have sometimes made some mistakes. Sometimes they're little mistakes. Sometimes they're really big mistakes. We want to thank you for giving us second chances and for loving us even when we do something wrong. Heavenly Father, help us to learn from those mistakes so that we don't do them again. We also want to thank you so much for loving us and for being a good Heavenly Father to us. Please help keep everybody out there healthy and safe. In your name we pray, amen. I am so glad that you were all here with me this morning. And if you didn't know, our children's chapel and our children's ministries are all open again. Mm -hmm. So during the 1030 service, you can come on down for children's chapel. And, and we'll do some fun, fun crafts and some games. And we'll learn more. Yep. And our youth group is also open. And if you look online on our newsletters on our website at stmarkscheyenne.org. I believe that's the website you'll be able to find all of our schedules on there for the youth group. So youth group is for seventh grade through 12th grade, and children's chapel is for five years and up. Also, our nursery will be open again, too. So everybody is welcome to come and worship. <laughs> we'll see you all soon. Bye.